Are you tired of building bases and then having this happen? Perhaps you'd like your spring traps to work more like this. In this video, I'm going to teach you guys the best ways for placing spring traps in your war bases. Hey, what's up guys? Bisectatron here from One Hive Gazette. Welcome back to another defensive video. Like I said, talking all about the spring trap. We'll get to replays on the developer build in just a moment. But first, three quick things you should know going into this video about spring traps. First, put, place them away from your archer queen or other places a kill squad is likely to go because those areas will get neutralized and the hogs won't travel through them. Second, um, put them between defenses. Obviously, the biggest uh, priority of spring traps is to take out hogs and hogs travel between defenses. Um, and third, put them where heal spells will likely be used on the hogs because they, the spring traps are immune to heals um, and you want to put them there and put the giant bombs elsewhere where the heals won't be used. Okay, so hopefully that's all simple enough. Let's go ahead and take a look at some replays on the developer build because the best way to learn about how to place springs and how to get hogs is just to watch some replays. Here's one thing that you don't want to do. You saw it at the very beginning here, but let's talk about why. You don't want to place a spring trap where the hogs travel over it, then continue to travel until they get to that next defense. The two defenses should only have one tile between them. That way, either direction the hogs go, you know they're going to hit that spring trap. Um, it will work the other way because the spring trap is directly in front of the mortar, but like I said, it's only gonna work one way, and if the hogs travel the other way on the attack, their hogs are not likely to get hit by the spring trap. So make sure the defenses are touching so you can get the benefit of the spring trap either way, otherwise you might have that problem happen. Okay, moving on to the next one here, let's just go ahead and throw down some hogs on three defenses. We have a spring trap between each one. Uh, first one's gonna get three hogs, second one's going to get like one or two, I think, yeah, one hog. Um, now let's compare that to something else we have here. In this next attack, I have lined up some more defenses, but they are only two by twos. Inferno Towers, Teslas, um, those all count. Air Sweepers, they are more effective at taking out hogs because the hogs are more clumped up as they approach these smaller defenses. Better to put spring traps on, and as shown, we got three hogs on each. Same number of hogs going in each time. Okay, moving on to another one. We're going to go ahead and use air defenses. That way the hogs won't get taken out. What you'll notice is the hogs often, especially if they're deployed this way, will stay in two groups. One towards the top of the defense, one towards the bottom. And that only makes for, um, and th this last one, no hogs were hit by the spring trap. That doesn't count when they cut over. Um, that's just how the base was set up. But you can see the problem, if you put it directly between those defenses, the hogs will often only one or even none of them will get hit by it. Sometimes these little guiding walls are a good way to funnel hogs into the spring trap. So we're going to get three hogs each time because the hogs are lazy. They don't like to jump walls um, and they'll go between uh, these walls and hit the spring trap directly. Three hogs each time. It does tell the attacker where your spring traps are if you use this, but sometimes they can already pretty much know it's going to be there anyway. This is a good way to funnel hogs into a spring trap that otherwise might miss it, as you saw in the first replay. Okay, one more. Let's test this out. Can we make them go in this staggered formation? Same number of hogs. You'll see it only works to a certain extent. Some hogs will jump the wall if it's too far out of the way, but other hogs will stay in that little um, lane that's been created by the walls. So you typically want to do it as it was shown in the first replay, where you have um, them funnel funneling the hogs into that middle tile, which is the best place to hit the hogs with the spring trap. Okay, moving on to another one. This is another thing you don't want to do is put it between three defenses. We have a spring trap that's between those three air defenses. You can see not as effective. The pathing is weird. It's hard to predict. Oftentimes the hogs will ignore it if it's on the corner of the defense because they go up towards the sides, not the corner really. So you have to get pretty lucky. We'll go ahead and take a look at a replay. I believe this one, the hogs do actually hit the spring trap it's only because the defenses go down at the exact same time, which typically won't happen. You can see it works out perfectly. They kind of intersect there each group, but that's not is what that's not going to happen most of the time. And you want to put it between two defenses. Commit to two defenses. Don't 
uh, have three defenses with a spring trap between all of them. That'll just uh, lead to failure typically. Okay, so let's try a double spring trap. See what this does. We have it on the bottom in the middle. You can see it does pretty well, it gets five hogs. So you six is ideal, but five is still pretty strong. Um, this is good if you know there's gonna be a lot of hogs going through, but if there's only gonna be maybe less than 10, uh, you might not get all six hogs you're looking for. And the kill squad can get a lot of value if it takes this area out because that's two spring traps neutralized. Let's move the air defenses up. Can we slide the hogs away? You'll see they actually spread out on their own, so it doesn't matter which kind of angle they're coming from, they'll still hit the spring traps pretty much the same way. So you don't have to worry about it, like a giant bomb trying to line them up like in the old days when you had double giant bomb. Uh, they will spread out naturally, so that, you can't really predict how they'll approach the defense based on the orientation of other nearby defenses. Here's something that you might want to consider though. Don't put a spring trap in the middle, put one on the top and the bottom. So you'll see what I mean here, because the hogs split into two groups, uh, also five hogs, but I think it's just more reliable in general. If you have a three by three defense and you want to put double spring traps between two of those three by threes, put one on the top corner, one on the bottom corner, leave the middle because the middle is often where hogs don't even go. Okay, so this last example I think you guys might really find interesting. Um, I put all these defenses down before the actual defenses that have the spring traps between them. Um, just one spring trap this time to kind of shuffle the hogs. That way it's random the way they approach. I think I dropped uh, like five hogs. And this one we just put it between the defenses the typical way. And what it happened there, they ignored the spring trap. This is what can happen. Like I said before, the hogs often take a high road and a low road to the defense and they often don't take that middle path where we typically put the spring trap. Now, does that mean that you want to put the spring trap on the top side or the bottom side of the defense? Not always, because sometimes the hogs, if they're coming at an angle, like a very strong angle, more than we saw in one of the replays a few back, um, they can ignore the spring trap as well. We'll take a look at a different way to do it. Once again, here's the same scenario. Uh, this time we do get two hogs. So a little bit of luck involved, but sometimes the hogs split into those two streams because they don't like going at the defense head on down the middle. Um, so you gotta be careful. This is a better way I find to do it. And I got three hogs both times, I think. If, you can, if you're able to orient the fences so they're about two tiles staggered, meaning only one tile of overlapping um, orientation, I guess, as you can see there. You put the spring trap on that one overlapping tile because that's pretty much the only path the hogs have to that defense. You can see right there, boom, uh, only two hogs actually, but it's still more reliable. I think we get three hogs this next time. So this is, you know, oftentimes you can't set up your, your base this way. It just won't allow it, but this is a good place if you're worried about you know, hogs coming through and you want to get value from these spring traps, if you orient your defenses this way, you're narrowing that little lane that the hogs can take between defenses. If they're perfectly lined up with each other, there's a lot of different ways the hogs can approach, but if they're kind of diagonal like this, there's really only a, f a very narrowed path between the defenses. And right here, we got the all three hogs. So better testing, we had zero and two on the first one and two and three on the second one. So that would seem to be a more effective way to do it, um, to orient them a little bit offset if the base permits. Anyway, that is all the attacks I have. This was done on the developer build, which uh, most people don't have access to, so don't ask in the comments. I can't help you out there. Um, so hope you enjoyed those replays. A quick summary before we wrap up this video here three good things to do, two bad things to do, just to kind of summarize what we saw, not including the double spring trap, which is kind of a personal preference. A lot of people don't use double spring traps and sometimes that's putting too many eggs in one basket. So these are all the single spring trap uh, points I made in the video. Top left there, um, smaller defenses work better. So if you have Inferno Towers, if you're a Town Hall 9, Air Sweepers, Teslas, um, you're more likely to get hogs on the spring traps because there's less of surface area for the hogs to approach, making more of a narrow approach. Just like the next one, you're kind of doing that artificially by staggering the defenses, two tiles offset there. Um, really effective, this uh, method with the walls to guide the hogs to the spring trap if you don't mind the attacker knowing you have a spring trap because that kind of yells, hey, I have a spring trap in that location. But oftentimes, 
they know it's there anyway. And you can do it maybe in one or two locations where it's critical that you take out hogs. Don't have them between defenses that aren't one tile away, because if they approach from one side, they can run over it as we saw in the very beginning and that won't help you. And don't put them between three defenses. It's kind of basically letting luck take its course. And sometimes the hogs will completely ignore it. Sometimes they'll get lucky, but in general, that just makes it too risky and you're not likely to get any hogs. So commit to two defenses and really set it up with the first three concepts in mind. Okay, that will do it. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think if you want to see this uh, type of video more. If you like the music, which I added, I typically don't have music, but thought it might be something to kind of make it a little more lively. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bisectatron out.